Well, praise the Lord in Jesus' holy and blessed name. What a beautiful day it is to be in Jesus. Oh, amen. Oh, and amen. Amen. Take a few moments today to share with you in the blessings of God in what he has for the, the believer. And it's beautiful indeed. It really, truly is. We're into that time of year now where here in South Carolina, along the beaches, it's tourist season, summer is upon us. And so there's a vast <laughs> supply of people to minister unto. And whenever you have a place where you've got money coming in at that, you know, like that, there will be a homeless population as well who also come here. And the weather is good 10 months out of the year for those who are the homeless. And we do have a couple of strong shelters here where the Lord is, is preached and they are Christian shelters. And so we reach out in those ways as well. And we're one of the fastest growing communities in the country right now. And so lots of new folks in need of Bible believing church homes. So praise the Lord. So lots of opportunities to share the gospel in word or deed. And that's really where we're going with it. The opportunities, there are so many opportunities in which to share the Lord. Oh, and amen. From the tourists that we can preach to on the corners and out on the beaches, share the word of God with them, uh, to the homeless and meeting their spiritual as well as physical needs and helping to grow the Bible-believing congregations we have with new folks in need of that. And so, blessed indeed. Lots of opportunities that are out there for those who wish to share. Yes, indeed. And much like the map behind me here, to a certain extent, it just reminds us of the call to go and preach the gospel to every creature, right? Mm -hmm. Every nation. Hallelujah. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Praise the Lord. Beautiful truth. And it's what we're really all about. Reaching the lost with the gospel, Christ crucified, is shed blood, the price of our sin, for the forgiveness of our sin. His death upon the cross, he was buried, rose the third day. Jesus, that's our salvation. It is from him, a gift, caress, grace, unmerited favor. By grace, through faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, indeed, not of works, lest any man should boast. The grace of God. Yes. In Jesus' holy and blessed name, yes. All right. All right. Now, to so opportunities to share. And Paul when, uh, uses this opening for his epistles in one form or another. And, and it's blessed indeed. And the why is blessed indeed. And amen. Consider this, it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, we'll start there. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope 
in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. One day, man. <laughs> Beautiful opening. Wonderful to receive, if you were the Thessalonians then, to you know, receive such a wonderful opening to an epistle to you. And for us today, it is the Greek word charis. Two common words of the day, greetings, charis, in Greek, and peace or shalom in the Hebrew. And Paul brings them together, grace and peace, uh, one amen. And it, we've taken these two words that were common in the, the day and brought them into a very special context. Paul has by inspiration of the Spirit of God, by God. And so they have this new significance for us in the body of Christ. Grace, God's unmerited favor. In the Old Testament, that's what you, you find the word favor. And even you know, in the very beginning of the New Testament, when the angel Gabriel comes to Mary, hell, thou that art highly favored, man, uh, it has become grace, this unmerited favor of God. And of course, peace, heart peace with God, peace with the peace of God and the peace, first peace with God and then the peace of God. <laughs> so grace and peace from God, our father. And he's God first, first and foremost, because he's God to whether anyone believes that he's God or not, he is God. <laughs> and he is in a very special sense, our father, the body of Christ. We are the sons and daughters. And he is our father. In the New Testament fatherhood, his fatherhood takes on a, a more of a significance than we find in the old. While he was mentioned, uh, referred to as the father of various objects, like the father of lights and such. But in the New Testament, his fatherhood is of much more focus and preeminence in, in our understanding of who he is. He is our heavenly father. And as such, we are his children. And oh, what a glorious truth there is in that, that we have peace with almighty God creator of all that is, ever was, will ever be, God. He is also our Father, a loving Father. Now, a loving Father does all the things that a loving Father does. Indeed, including correction and reproof when necessary. He loves us. Amen. And from our Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, because he is the Lord. Whether they believe it or receive it or not as well, he is the Lord. And by what he has done, we have salvation, the forgiveness of sin, his shed blood, the price. Indeed, the high price blood of Christ himself, the Messiah. Christ in the Greek, Messiah the Hebrew, the anointed one, the Lamb of God, whose blood was shed to pay the penalty, the price of our sin. Jesus went to that cross and there he died a physical death signified by his burial in the tomb and for three days on the third day he rose jesus is alive indeed he ascended to the right hand of the father and in the not too distant future at a time that is nigh at hand even at the door as even paul would write jesus will return the 
two angels tell the disciples when they see Jesus ascend up into the cloud and be taken out of their sight. Why stand you here gazing up into heaven? As you have seen him ascend, so shall he also descend. He's coming again. Not as a suffering servant this time, but a conquering king. Yes, indeed. Well, praise the Lord. And so grace and peace, grace, and peace from God, our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. He knows your work in the Lord, your labor of love. And for that, we pray for you as well. But we pray for all who will see this video. The Lord will see and hear and know and understand as we know he does and give that revelation to you that you will know that he does in fullness, in detail. To perfection. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. And let us go. Take every opportunity, brothers and sisters. Take every opportunity that the Lord gives to you. There are many. And many we miss. We don't. For whatever reasons. May we have eyes to see the opportunities that God has for us. It doesn't have to be across the world. It can be across the fence to your neighbor having coffee over the backyard fence, sitting at the kitchen table, sharing with those you love and know, call friend and family. And wherever else we might be a witness to the glory of a life in Christ, a new life in Christ. Oh, amen. Oh, amen. All right. Have a glorious, blessed, and beautiful day. In Jesus' holy and blessed name. Amen.